Good everyone. We have a quorum. It's now 6.05. I want to open up the public hearing. Mr. Administrator. I'm sorry, Mr. Attorney. Which one am I talking to? I'll take this one. Mr. Administrator, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is your first and only public hearing on a proposed ordinance amending the official zoning map to change the zoning classification from the Lake Protection Zoning District to uh, LPN, the Lake Protection Node Zoning District. Uh, this public hearing um, is uh, the subject property uh, of the public hearing rather is located on the north side of Bannerman Road approximately 750 feet east of the intersection of Bull Healy Road. Uh, this rezoning is consistent with the Lake Jackson Sustainable Development Project and the proposed ordinance. Um, uh, we are recommending, staff is recommending that you conduct the first and only public hearing and adopt the ordinance amending the official zoning map. You have four speaker cards. All right, Mr. Administrator, let's get those speakers up. The first speaker is Steve Greenwell. Mr. Greenwell, name and address for the record, please, sir. Steve Greenwell, 7067 Standing Pines Lane, Tallahassee. I uh, just got short notice on this, so in reviewing what you've got there, basically, uh, if you look at Table 1, I don't know if you're able to throw it up there on the screen, I have a copy of it here. Uh, it can show a drastic change from uh, Lake Protection to Lake Pr Protection Node. And basically, it creates a, uh, you have the uh, projector? We have it. We have it what, this, what this does is this basically creates an, a full urban setting in the middle of generally the state area of Tallahassee. Uh, Lake Protection uh, Node allows up to eight residential units per acre, plus a, a, a whole plethora, as you'll see, of commercial uses. Uh, one of the things about a lake protection area is to protect the lakes from that, from the pollution. You've got, uh, you can have auto repair shops. You're supposed to be limited to no more than 900 gallons per day usage, and you're allowing car washes to be in there. Uh, we've got four or five car washes within a couple miles of Bull Headley already, more coming. Uh, I think this is just uh, improper utilization of something that we've been trying to protect for years. We've got a few notes on there of uh, what happens. One of, another one's a daycare. Uh, the concentration of traffic on daycare is extreme in the morning and afternoons. We've already got enough problems on Banner and Road until we get that roundabout in it to Kesta. So there's a multitude of uh, pr traffic problems that be created with all these different changes that are potentially allowed. Now understand, uh, right now with lake protection, you're allowed to, uh, one house per two gross acres, which is fine. I understand the, the property owner wanting to get more value to his uh, property. If we did uh, clustered subdivision, he would be allowed to go up four times that amount. He'd be allowed to do two houses per acre, which would give him a substantial increase and still maintain the essence, and I think the intent of the comp plan to keep this as primarily a residential area, but still allow the home, the landowner to improve the value of his property. So I would recommend that we reconsider from Lake Protection Node to go into the um, clustered subdivision. The other thing this sets us up for is the potential of across the street. You got about 100 acres that just clear cut two years ago that is uh, lake protection. I don't want to let this to be the uh, camel under the tent to come in there and then put a thousand homes in there on that property across the street with the same type of lake protection node with a lot of commercial in an area that's basically is the estate area of Tallahassee and it destroys, I think, the intended comp plan. Thank you. Thank you Next speaker. Next speaker is Francis Nicholas. Ms. Nicholas, name and address for, for the record, please, ma'am. Francis Nicholas, 8747 Minnow Creek Drive. Thank you uh, for letting me speak. What I find the glaring omission in the Planning Department's recommendation is a factual statement concerning why the developer or owner requires this rezoning. A well-reasoned and obvious answer is that this owner wants to develop, overdevelop less than 10 acres, in fact, nine and a half acres of land in an environmentally sensitive area. 
the attorney for the owner assured the planning commissioners at their meeting on november the seventh that the only residential units that only residential units will be built the lake protection node zoning will allow the overbuilding of this property with up to an additional 71 units this in my opinion reveals the real reason for this request in my opinion also this property does not meet the intended strategic initiative goal established by your commission or with the intended purpose of the lake protection node zoning lake protection node zoning was implemented and i quote these nodes were located at specific primary intersections to allow for the creation of compact mixed use and multimodal neighborhood centers within the lake protection category unquote this commission could question why the bannerman road bull heatley intersection is even considered a primary intersection lake protection node zoning is only allowed on the east side of this intersection and therefore all four corners couldn't be developed anyway bull heatley ends at bannerman road to the south and into the lake at the north continuing to quote these nodes are intended to serve the surrounding areas with office retail and employment opportunities this commission again could question how the intention of the lake protection node zoning will manifest here since there's no request for rezoning to date to to make lake protection node for any of the other properties that actually front and are on bannerman road and within a quarter mile of the intersection if none of these properties ever develop retail or office space our area will just have more residential units crowded on less acreage adding more problems to the issues for our environment drainage and traffic congestion again quoting from the lake protection node zoning in a manner that encourages walking reduces the predominantly automobile dependent land use pattern in areas designated lake protection and encourage more compact development within the urban service area unquote this commission could question on this how this intention for the node zoning will be implemented since there are no sidewalks no bicycle paths and no trails on bannerman road bull heatley or in any of the surrounding neighborhoods i actually live in one and the traffic is horrendous um, just because this property meets the location requirement for node zoning should not mean that the rezoning request be guaranteed or that this commission be required to approve this request thanking you in advance thank you ma'am next speaker next speaker steve gasvini <clears throat> mr gasvini name and address for record please sir steve gasvini 4708 capital circle northwest thank you commissioners um, in 2015, uh, this commission selected some areas in the lake protection to provide some more intense development. As a result, the lake protection node was introduced. It was compliant, got amended by this commission and with approval of or uh, thumbs up of the you know, planning commission and the planners. Um, all we're tr trying to do is be consistent with the compliance. That's, that's the rule. We've got to be consistent with compliance. We cannot be inconsistent with compliance. Um, the issue today is not traffic. The it's not the school board. It's not the uh, environment. It is going to come up. All these issues are going to come up when we go through the process of getting site plan approval, getting environmental permit. All the issues would get uh, you know, debated. It's going to get reviewed by the staff. It would... Uh, some of it goes through some of the uh, bodies that would actually require some more public hearing. So that's the issue that is in front of you today. We're asking approval based on the fact that we have to be consistent with compliance. We're trying to be consistent with the compliance. That's the only issue. Um, this process, this node has been through a public hearing at the time that the commission amended the compliance. So it has been uh, debated. I'm not suggesting that it shouldn't get debated or, or talked about, but I'm saying that there has been opportunity even in the past to discuss this issue. So we're asking for your approval. And uh, the important issue probably is there's no intent to build any commercial or any car wash or any, any other 
you see here that intent is to build some residential units in here. That's all. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Any more speakers? The last speaker on, the last speaker on this uh, item is Alan Watts. Mr. Watts, name and address for the record, please, sir. Good evening, Alan Wise, 1590 Village Square Boulevard. Um, I'm the applicant's agent. Uh, just kind of wanted to reiterate some of the things that Mr. Gazvini mentioned. Uh, the uh, issues of stormwater traffic, buffers, et cetera, will get worked out through the development plan process. We can't get into that process until we have the correct zoning. Um, your staff and the Planning Commission found the zoning to be consistent with the comp plan. We're asking that you find the same and um, vote for approval. And as uh, there's any debate, I'm available for question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner, we have no more speakers. I have Commissioner Daly in queue. Commissioner Daly, you have the floor. I'll defer to the District Commissioner first. All right. right. Yes. Want to come back Mr. To District me. Commissioner, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I I'll weigh in. Um, something's going to be done with the property. Let's just let's just start with that. And David, I probably have some questions for you because this is probably my weak spot in the grand scheme of things as far as land use. Um, can I ask you to answer a few questions for me, David? Do you mind? Is it? So if we approve the zoning tonight, um, am I able to tie uh, conditions or, or parameters with that, or it just follows the path of the normal uh, uh, zoning process or, or the land use process? <clears throat> no, tonight would be a straight rezoning. Uh, under this process, you wouldn't be able to tie conditions of approval to this type of and I, and I And I understand, yeah, the schools have been, you know, the traffic schools, I, I get all of that, but clearly some of the neighbors feel like they've got some concerns still. So if we wanted to at least listen to those and address those, I mean, is there a better process? Well, the, <clears throat> the process that allows you to do that, to have input, uh, would be a, a PUD, a planned unit development. That's a negotiated zoning process. Uh, the applicant would need to submit a concept plan to us to review it would go to the DRC, then it would come to, uh, back to the board, and <clears throat> through that process you could negotiate conditions of the zoning approval. But so, that's only through the PUD process, not through the straight, we're looking at just a straight rezoning process tonight. And on a timing basis, because I'm sensitive to the fact that, you know, at some level it takes up time as money, but what's, what's the timing for that? Well, again, it would have to go back, uh, they would have to submit a concept plan for the development of the property. It wouldn't have to be a detailed plan, but it would need to be a fairly, um, um, will have to be a concept plan uh, consistent with our code. That would go to the DRC, then it would go to the Planning Commission, then it come back to the, to the board for final approval. Through that process, there would be several public hearings. Right. Uh, there could be public, uh, uh, there would be public input on the concept plan itself, and that's where the uh, mitigation would be identified, and those would come to the board as recommended conditions of the PUD rezoning approval. They could be attached to that approval. Okay. Because, um, I, I mean, I hear some of the concerns, and a lot of them are, as were pointed out, that things like schools and things like traffic, these are things that are already being handled. But there's some other things relative to uh, uh, design standards or buffers or lack of commercial type of things. Those I can't. After the zoning goes through, I'm, I'm done. Not at this point. Those issues would all be addressed during the site plan review and approval process. It would go, they would submit a site plan that would go, be reviewed by staff, go to the DRC. Right. At that time, we would take public uh, comments. You know, we could, we could address those conditions at that time. But the board's ability to do that at, during this type of rezoning process doesn't exist. That only occurs through the PUD process. So I'm anxious to hear from everybody else, but my feeling is, I mean, I, I, I feel for the developer. They have every right to do something with the property, but the neighbors have some rights too, and, the, and we, this is the dance we do all the time. For the people that think that nothing will be done, that's just that's a non-starter. We're going to have something done with the property. The question is what's it look like and how does it end up? And we've all been through the comp plan, and these were put together, these commercial nodes, or these, they were put in place specifically for these type of things. I would be very open to try and having a PUD put together. I'm, I'm sensitive to not punting too far down the road, but I'd like to hear from everybody else and see how they feel about this. Uh, if I could add to Commissioner, this piece of property is a, is a component of a larger group of properties owned by the Chastain family. I know Vinny's father, I 
actually lives there and, 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 and his family owns, say, several tracts of property that probably combined are 30 plus acres of property. What we're talking about tonight in the rezoning is just a, is a component of that. So that, that could be a consideration as well, looking at the entire property holdings, if they do have future development plans to do that through a DR, excuse me, a PUD process, they could master plan the development at one time and get the approval all at one time. And then we have a little bit more control and a little bit more force. Well, there would be certainty on the remaining component of their properties, right. which I believe they do have plans to develop in the future as well. Okay. I'd love to hear from everybody else, but my feeling is that's probably the best of all worlds, but I'll, I'd really love to hear from everybody else before I jump in and make a motion. Then um, Commissioner Delosier, I'll go to Commissioner Dozier. I'm sorry, Commissioner Daly, Commissioner Dozier, and then I'll come back to you. All right, Commissioner Daly. You sure you want to hear from me? Yeah, that's what we're here for. <laughs> um, very rarely does this happen, um, but I disagree with the staff recommendation and the Planning Commission's recommendation. And Commissioner Deloge, I agree with you. Something's going to happen with that piece of property. It is going to be developed, and I am completely comfortable with the developmental rights under lake protection as it is. I think the neighborhoods realize that it's going to be developed at some point, or what can be developed out there. I do understand there's some wetlands. When we designed lake protection node, and I was the one uh, that drove this uh, idea to begin with. It was never my vision to allow density and intensity of this magnitude to be put in lake protection. Net. I mean, I'll just be honest with this. Maybe I didn't uh, construe that appropriately, but it was about uh, the commercial aspects in pre-existing um, uh, intersections around lake protection, not... Uh, single-family developments of this density and intensity. Bull Headley is a dead-end road that dead-ends into the lake on one side and Bearman on the other. Uh, it's two-lane even when we do four-lane it. I mean, um, we're talking about massive development. Not necessarily this one, but it has been recognized. There are other large tracks as well. And I think that we need to send a clear statement, one way or the other, of what we're going to find appropriate and allowable. And so I would love to see... Um, the owner of the property come back with a great development that fits into um, the pre-existing neighborhoods and how they operate and how they look in the whole nine yards with the size of the lots and not this type of density and intensity. I will say also for the record that I am very concerned about the environmental impact of a high density, high intensity development. I have stood in people's front yards, as you have as well, right there on Broken Era, which would be directly impacted by this development during a rainstorm right now and stood and watched inches of water flowing into people's garages and everything. And um, so I am going to go ahead and make the motion for option number two, that we do not move forward with uh, the um, uh, recommendation of Lake Protection Node. Um, and we encourage the owner and the developer to come up with a great plan uh, under the current uh, Lake Protection zoning uh, for development. I'm for option number two. That's my motion. Option number two has been moved by Commissioner Daly with also direction for the developer and the neighborhood to come together to come up with a great development plan. No, sir. No, sir. Oh. No, sir. This is option number I encourage two. the owner of the, of the property, if they want to develop it, to come up with a great opportunity and a great uh, idea under the current zoning. Now, right. In my under mind, the current zoning, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Lake, lake protection node is, um, is not the option I want to entertain. Right. So that, that, that would be under the current zoning. Um, that motion needs to be seconded. Motion dies for lack of a second. Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, forgive me, I'm coming down to the map here. I, this is a challenging issue. Um, for me, what it comes down to is consistency. And obviously, I and mean, we, we hear debates about um, the interpretation of different amendments to the comp plan or rules at different times. What I always come back to is um, two things. I mean, the consistency of uh, the recommendations and the staff report and the Planning Commission reviewing this. And we have seen the Planning Commission disagree with staff at times, for sure. Um, and sometimes that is uh, persuasive for me, and sometimes it's not. Um, we, we do see debates in this, and there are a lot of related concerns. 
to me, the consistent factor here is the proximity that this is within our 2015 decision for the lake protection nodes. So I understand if it might not have been on a specific intersection. I mean, this is my understanding. This is a complicated issue. I've read the, but it may not appear like what most people thought would happen with lake protection node, but it is within the scope. That's my understanding from reading the item within the scope of what we made the decision in 2015. So that, that was my initial reaction to this item. Hearing some of the discussion thus far, I am concerned about, um, one, making a choice to dial back the 2015 rule subject to this property alone. I think, Commissioner Daly, if, if, if you want to go in that direction and re reflect on the lake protection node and whether or not it should cover these areas, if I'm understanding this right, that's a different conversation. We need to have that conversation outside of any specific project, whether or not we want to revisit our decision of two years ago. On the PUD aspect, looking at a PUD for any developer, any small individual or large-scale company, that's an enormous process. It costs a lot, and I, I'm not sure if there's I mean, Mr. County Administrator, or do we have precedent for requiring someone to do a PUD? It was my, it's been my understanding that that is something that a developer, an owner chooses to do or is required based on the rules before they enter the process. I, I'm, Mr. I'm, Chairman, yes, yes absolutely. Uh, Commissioner, no, you are correct. That, uh, I, I think the way that it was discussed was that this would be a an option that would be available to the to the developers of the property to do a to do a PUD and the discussion about the the pros and cons and uh, and about doing more. But they had that option before coming to this point, right? They they have chosen not to do that. So the precedent of stopping at this point and saying we're not going to rezone based on a rule that we agreed to a couple years ago. Am I right about that point? I mean, this is the recommendation from staff. This is within the rules that were adopted for Lake Protection Node two years ago. It is consistent, but the rules gave you the, it just made a property eligible based on your determination today for rezoning. Right, but it was within that yes. zone that right. could be eligible for this. Yes. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. So, so th this is my concern. Um, I understand the traffic issues. I understand the environment. I understand the neighborhood concerns. We run into this, whether it's Myers Park or Bannerman or um, out in Fred George area. I mean, we, we've seen this a lot of different areas that, well, I'm, I'm thinking of some apartment complexes out there a few years ago. Um, there are density questions that come up. There are lots of different questions that come up. It is in line with the 2015 rules. I'm not in favor of pushing a PUD process, PUD process, um, at this point, and I would be in favor of either going back and revisiting the rules in general, so looking at all of the property, or approving this at this point because it is consistent at that, uh, it, with those rules. Um, finally, I do want to pick up on something David said, that the DRC process does allow for public comment. So the buffers, the, we, we've seen a lot of um, negotiation happen with staff um, and I believe they would lean in to protect the surrounding neighborhoods and the environmental protection. Are, I mean, we hear from developers all the time who may not be thrilled with the regulations that are imposed on the property, and it does go in for public comment. So that gives me some sense of comfort there. Um, so I don't mean to belabor the point, but this, this is a challenging one for me because I don't feel like we can change the, the rules just for one subject property. That makes me uncomfortable. Thank you. On point, Commissioner Daly? Actually, that's exactly what's going on tonight, is that we're changing the rules for one subject property. Because in 2015, when we drew the lake protection notes, if the original intent was to allow for density and intensity of this much, how come it wasn't drawn in to begin with? How come it wasn't drawn in to begin with? Why are we sitting here talking about density and intensity up to eight units per acre, possibly, and how come it wasn't included in the, when we told staff to go out and look at the lake protection nodes, 
draw the nodes, draw these boundaries, how come we did not include this to begin with in 2015? We are changing the lake protection node idea tonight for high density, and I'm just, I'm, I guess this is one I'll be out on the 6-1 vote for. <laughs> but, um, okay. Commissioner DeLoe. <laughs> We're, I hear what you're saying, and I, I have a tendency to believe that opening it up and re, reframing this right. opens up a whole new uh, set of issues. So my motion would be that instead of deny, we defer, with the idea being, I'm if I can do that. David, is that doable? I don't understand the process here. I'm assuming Mr. I can make it. Mr. Turner? I mean, that a motion to postpone indefinitely is mm -hmm. really what you're saying? Right. Um, yeah, that's doable. Okay. Um, okay. And then, the, then the applicant can be guided accordingly. Yes. They wish so to here, here's, I think there are some things that you get with the PUD from my limited land use knowledge that you wouldn't get with tonight's zoning. And I'm trying to give the neighbors every opportunity to craft something that meets everybody's guidelines and at the same time allow the developer to move forward with this. But I think if we deny it, it starts, it just kicks it all the way out. And I think so if I delay indefinitely and say we would, I would be personally very open to a HUD process and very open to them coming back in with something that goes, it's a little, it is, you're right, Commissioner Dozier, it is time consuming and is somewhat expensive. But as David pointed out, there's a much bigger piece of property here. And my sense is the Chastains could do this collectively for all of it as opposed to just this one piece. Because then what's going to happen is five years from now, somebody's going to come in with the other piece. And then five years from now, and we may not be here. And you talk about piecework. I'd rather see somebody take this holistically and say, what's it look like when we finish? And the neighbors all get a chance to say, this is what's important to us. This was not. We don't want commercial if that's a do or die type of thing. And those are the kind of things you can bake into it. So. So my motion would be that we postpone indefinitely, and I would be very open to bringing back some type of PUD, pro PUD, PUD related pro project that takes us to the next level. That's my motion. I'll second as chair. Thank you. Motion made by Commissioner Delos to postpone this item and for, well, I'll just say just to postpone the item. Mm -hmm. um, that motion was seconded by me as chair. I have, Commissioner Delos, you still have the floor? You can, are you done with the floor? Okay. Commissioner Pride, you have the floor. No, no, Thank you. Um, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, Commissioner Daly, you have a question on point? You good? Commissioner Pride, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. County Attorney, uh, that would this change from late protection to late protection node uh, violate uh, the settlement agreement called Bradfordville? No, no, sir. And does it violate the spirit of the Bradfordville settlement? In my opinion, no. Okay. When we initially made those uh, uh, four uh, areas to be commercial nodes, uh, was it not anticipated, I think a part of Commissioner Daly's question, was it not anticipated that density uh, increases in these areas? And while we utilize and specify these areas is because these were the areas we were trying to capture in place and focus uh, intense growth. Did I misunderstand something in those years, or, or have I forgotten something? No, I, I think it has been accomplished at the at the corner of Bannerman and Thomasville Road. I mean, that, that's where the commercial, if you, I don't want to use the word node, the commercial focus has been. Yeah. <clears throat> and it, it's my understanding that they don't intend to do commercial, that it's it may be higher density residential, but residential is what is what the plan is. So late protection node, which is the ask here tonight, is to do something different from commercial. It it could theoretically include all of those uses that were were up on the screen, but I believe the expressed intent is just to have residential only. I'm sorry, but you, you said that so smooth that I, I couldn't even is there a ripple on the Just water? For residential. Only. But, but let me tag on to what Commissioner Deloge asked. Can you, in rezoning this to the Lake Protection Node, say, but you can only have uh, residential? The answer is no. You cannot condition a straight rezoning. All right. So I'm, I'm trying to garner clarity. Uh, 
here. Are we like are these are these people like in the red zone and, and, and we move in the goal line back? Um, is that what's occurring? By by moving this down and making them go through a PUD and how much more money would the PUD uh, encumber for the um, owners to do? The answer is you're not pushing the, the goal line back, but you're making the end zone bigger. Um, so, but it will cost, it's, it's, if they decide to do a PUD rezoning, it will be the same expense again as they did so far. So we're, we're okay creating a, fostering a hardship uh, or a do-over. And I think that anything that, that they have incurred as an ex expense, um, we really should waiver their costs. Um, because what they're asking is not inconsistent with ground rules and with an expectation of what our county attorney has said. So they're not asking anything extraordinary. What they're asking is within the parameters of what exists. And one of the reasons that we have um, this matrix of uh, zoning rules, from my understanding, though limited, is that we might set uh, some standstill expectations for property owners, developers, to know what can be done in specific areas. And it just appears to me that this specific area ain't violating Bradfordville, which is a four-inch standard for stormwater, uh, which has a, a condensing of 28 lawsuits and a lot of, I, I just don't see, and I understand what you're saying, I'm sensitive to uh, flooding, uh, lake coloration and all of that. But I think that given that these people have an expectation of us consistent with the existing rules that we want to hark back to some other period. Um, we're, we're casting a hardship that they shouldn't have to endure. And I think that uh, if we're directing, because it wasn't their ask, it's us asking them to go out and, and incur additional expenses and do a PUD. And uh, that part of it to me, um, I'm just one commissioner, but it don't seem fair. Uh, all of the rules are set, set, set. They're not asking to go to the moon. They just, just want to develop nine acres here within the reasonable expectation. And as a word changed from, Herb, exactly what is the intensity change from uh, late protection to late protection node? Uh, what does that node word um, facilitate that mere late protection does not? By way of density. I'm trying to do the math in my head, but it's about an eight-fold increase in the density. Right. Right. Okay. That is extraordinary to ask. Yeah. Uh, eight-fold eight is fold. Ex extraordinary. And uh, not realizing, and I don't have anything that <laughs> distinguishes the math on this, uh, eight-fold is like <clears throat> red day. Mary, give me a word. That's like a lot, ain't it? Yeah. So I, um, this is extraordinary ask um, on an eightfold. Right. Yet, uh, in terms of concentrating uh, in area specific for increases, this area is actually fits into that. Um, that, um, and I just want to be fair that as we're uh, going to. Now, philosophically, uh, Commissioner Jackson, just 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 um, pedagogical moment. I believe uh, this issue cr shows the philosophic uh, difference between District One issue and uh, District Four. Um, you see, I, I don't know about your district, but District One, for instance, I have sought and desire greater intensity, density, growth. I want folk to come in eightfold something down there for affordable housing. And it's just so interesting to me that uh, certain areas of community are very resistant to intensity, density. They don't want nobody. I want them. They don't want them. So just to show you the 
how our district situation dynamics are. This is a beautiful example of the philosophic difference of a commissioner uh, in terms of what we represent. And I don't, you know, spare or um, necessarily envy, but it is a great feeling to be able to resist the desire of people to rush and to build and to give more to your area. I have the opposite experience here as a commissioner. Uh, can't get enough attention and demand. So um, those comments said, um, Commissioner, I'm unwilling to lend ear to uh, other voices. Thanks, sir. Commissioner Lilly. Um, thank you. Uh, I, f I feel we have, I mean, two years ago we decided to make this change in the comprehensive plan. We did it because we wanted to promote sustainable growth within the lake protection zone. And this was one avenue to do it. The uh, request we have here today is to build, it looks like, seven, up to 71 units on almost nine acres. Pre previously, I thought it said it was up to two units per acre prior to, is it, I know, before, I mean. And under the lake protection. So what was lake protection? One, and two, one, one house on two acres? Yes. One house on two acres, and this would be uh, eight. On one acre, oh, 71 units on a, almost nine acres of land. But we, have, we made this decision two years ago because we wanted to promote sustainable growth within this broader arena. So we chose certain areas that seemed like they were likely for residential use. And, and some, obviously some commercial would be available in some areas if, if uh, you know, the market demanded that at some point on down the road. I just feel like we can't back out now and say, well, two years ago, we didn't really mean what we said then. Now we mean what we, you know, we mean something else altogether. We know that our community is growing. We know that there is a difficulty in finding areas where people can develop homes that are compatible with the surrounding neighborhoods. I think that the uh, applicants have a good reputation of working with neighborhoods and the community and working with our staff. So I would just uh, offer a substitute motion uh, to go with option one and go with the staff recommendation. Option one has been moved by Commissioner Lindley. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Dozier. Commissioner Dozier, you're in queue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate that, Commissioner Lindley. And I just I want to clarify something because I'm 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 hearing your comments, Commissioner Daly and Deloge and others, Mr. County Administrator. I don't know if you want to. Chime in or county attorney here, chair's discretion. If I'm, I base my comments here, page five, it says that uh, staff determined that only 9.46 acres of the 11.47 were within this zone that could, or w within the scope that could be rezoned for the lake protection node. So the analysis happened that we, we set out, and I'm, I looked at some of the other maps, this circle, and only 9.46 acres of that were within that note. So, so it is not changing. Yes, it is changing the zoning that has been there for a very long time, correct? Correct. This would, so, this would, so, create, this would change the zoning, yes. So to Commissioner Daly's point, it is changing the zoning that has been there for a very long time, but based on the um, comp plan or the change that we made in 2015 for lake protection nodes, it is consistent with those rules that allowed a zoning change within that designated area. Is that correct? That's correct. It allows you to make that determination. And staff already eliminated a couple of acres from this specific parcel that they wanted to develop and pulled that outside because it was outside of that, that radius. Is that that's correct as well? That's correct. Okay. So I come back to this. that I just wanted to clarify that point because if we were changing something and going outside of our rules, I would be concerned as well. This is within the rules we set out in 2015. So again, I come back. If, if we want to revisit our 2015 decision and work through the comp plan again with the nodes, everything like that, Mr. Deloge, you're right. That would open up a world of different conversations. This may not have been what everybody imagined, but a lot of, you know, we don't imagine things till we see them on paper sometimes. 
Um, this isn't within that circumference. It is within the rules that we designated. And on that list of possible uses within Lake Protection Node, housing is there. So we make rules general, and then people pick and choose. I mean, they can be very specific, and they were more specific in Lake Protection than in many places or in the nodes in many places. But we still have a lot of allowable uses within that category. And private sector gets to pick and choose. So I just, I, I needed to clarify that point because I am concerned. If I had misread it, I wanted to know that. But this is consistent with our rules. So I'm, I will support this. And if we want to revisit this in general, please bring that up. But um, I'd be well, welcome to the conversation. I may not want to change my mind in the future, but um, I think this is consistent. Thank you. Commissioner, this is that consistency thing which I... Um, I'm persuaded by the gentle ladies here tonight, and I think that uh, Commissioner Lindley, uh, I, I just know good stuff when I hear it. I was reaching for it, but you just stroked it, and uh, I agree with what you said, and I'm going to support the motion. Um, the word expectation is one that I've, I've circled in my notes, and that is what can people reasonably expect by the rules that are already existent? And uh, I think Commissioner Dozier just said that it was reasonable. Now, the eightfold from one to two uh, to eight on one, uh, here again, Commissioner Jackson, uh, will these homes be on, on um, Central Sewer? Is that, is that true? Okay. So here again, Commissioner Jackson, 15 miles from the sewer treatment plant, we will build new homes that on day one will have access to the so, sewer, central sewer, and we're still arguing and trying to get central sewer down on the south side, round the corner and down the street from the sewer treatment plant. This is another learning and teachable moment um, of what I, I'm talking about, equitable disparity uh, in access to sewer. Access to sewer can be garnered 15 miles north of Tallahassee, but not 1.5 miles within the sewer treatment plant. That's a disparity. Um, I'm going to support this motion <clears throat> for all of the reasons that you all have said much better than I could attain. But you have attained to uh, a standard of thought which uh, represents uh, my own. And then finally, uh, this is an extraordinary moment that we are moving property uh, from a one on two acre and there are areas in this community we have requirements for one house per 10 acres. And I have uh, long thought that that's a very luxurious standard. And when you place more homes, you get greater dividend. Um, the city is going to pick up some new accounts. Uh, tax base is going to increase. The county is going to get paid um, for taxes. On, and it's going to be a wealthier county because 71 houses is going up and not one on two, which would be about uh, whatever that would be. So a lot more money for us. So I'm going to support this motion. Thank you, Commissioner Protner. I have no more commissioners in queue to speak. Uh, if there's no more discussion, I'm ready to take a vote. Substitute motion on the floor is for option one, made by Commissioner Lindley. That was seconded by Commissioner Dozier. Um, no more discussion on the floor. All those in favor of option one came by saying aye. Aye. Are those opposed? Aye. Motion passes five to two. Commissioner Lowe's, Commissioner Daly in dissent. Item number 20. Item number 20. 20. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, this um, item is um, a first and only public hearing. Um, you have seen this item in another version. Uh, about a month or so ago, it is um, a significant uh, regulatory ordinance uh, dealing with uh, communication towers, facilities, and utility poles in the county's right-of-way. Um, it has gone back and been rediscussed with the appropriate um, utility companies who have become involved. I don't know if we have any speaker cards on it or not. I see no speaker cards. Um, Hopefully you all have been, and I, and I believe each of you have been given a uh, briefing by uh, Ms. Iserman, uh, who is 
by far the expert now in, in this field, uh, but it is ready for prime time, and we recommend its adoption. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. I'll tell you what, uh, this speaks uh, leaps and bounds about Jessica Eisman. If you remember when we first brought this up, uh, we had a lot of speakers, and they had a lot of uh, a lot of different objections to it, but we asked them to go back and work with our county attorney's office to put together something that everybody can agree on. And today we have not one speaker on the item which either says that she beat him into submission or there was a good, <laughs> there was a good amount of negotiation where, where they felt like move, they got what they needed one. out of it. Second. Yes, option one has been moved by Commissioner Daly, seconded by Commissioner Deloge. All those in favor of the motion on the floor indicate by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion carries without objection. Uh, we're back in general business. Item number no, 16. More public hearing. Uh, one more? One more. 21. I'm sorry. Okay, item number 21. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, item number 21 seeks, uh, recommends that you conduct the first and only public hearing to adopt an ordinance updating the comprehensive plan to include our capital improvement schedule. We have no speakers on the side. Move option one, sir. Staff recommendation has been moved by Commissioner Proctor, seconded by Commissioner Deloge. All those in favor of the motion will indicate by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion carries without objection. Item number 16. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, this item seeks your approval for the placement of necessary insurance coverages for 2018. Overall, Commissioners, our rates remain competitive, and while they're up slightly, they're well within our anticipated amount approved in your FY18 budget. We have no speaker cards, and with that, we would recommend option one. Option one has been moved by Commissioner Lindley, seconded by Commissioner Deloge. All those in favor of the motion on the floor. Oh, 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 Mr. Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a speaker. Commissioner Daly. Yeah, uh, I do this every year on the insurance coverages. Uh, you know, with my company, one yes. of my colleagues, I mean, one of my clients <clears throat> is the Florida League of Cities. Mm -hmm. Florida Municipal Insurance Trust is affiliated with the League of Cities. It is a separate corporate entity with a separate board of directors, mm -hmm. and I do not work for the uh, Florida Municipal Insurance Trust. Mr. Attorney, do I have a conflict of interest, or uh, do I vote on this issue? You do not have a conflict of interest. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that was on the record, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. All those in favor of the motion on the floor in case, are saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries without objection. I am number 17, Mr. Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, you have two, two full board appointments to consider uh, before you. One for the Joint City County Bicycling Work Group. Uh, for a three-year term, uh, eligible applicants are uh, listed before you. And also an option two, the eligible candidates or applicants uh, for your uh, spot on the planning commission are there before you for your consideration. Can I, can I introduce, uh, can I entertain a motion for option number one with the three, um, option number one has been moved with the three uh, members that are reelected. Uh, that motion has been made by Commissioner DeLose, has been seconded by Commissioner Lindley. All those in favor of the motion on the front came by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries without objection. Now I entertain a, a motion for option number two. Tim Mem has been moved by Commissioner DeLoe, seconded by Commissioner Lindley. Hold, Any, hold that a thought for a second. Yes, sir. That nomination is fine, but if you are going to nominate him and approve him, he has a potential conflict of interest waiver that we also will need to approve. If you would include that in your motion, and if it passes five to two, then he's in and the conflict is waived. Any can, objection? Can we hear what the potential conflict is? He, from time to time, represents development interests that may come before the Planning Commission. So there's no standing conflict. It just from time to time, there may be some company that he is affiliated with. So, and then he would have to recuse. Himself. I'm I'm fine with that as part of my motion. And I'd also like to say, I mean, it's rare we get somebody with this kind of development experience <coughs> that doesn't have over over conflicts in our area that's right. willing to take the time. So I'm looking forward to it. Mr. Dozier. Thank you. Just to be clear and appreciated our retreat yesterday and the discussion about ethics, this is what we want to see, correct, Mr. County Attorney? We want someone to disclose it early, to have it on the record and approved. And I believe when Tim has served um, in other capacities and he, he's been on the Planning Commission, he, he has done the same thing and he's recused himself appropriately at different times. Is yes. that correct? And, and this is the process that we hoped it would be. Fantastic. Thank you. This is Leon County. This is what we do. Thank you for bringing it up, Commissioner Dozier. Uh, all those in favor of the motion on the floor made by Commissioner DeLoe, seconded by Commissioner Lindley, indicate by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion carries without objection. We are on to number eight. Was that number 18? Number 18. 
Sir, Mr. Chairman, item number 18 seeks full board appointments of commissioners to authorities, boards, committees, and councils, and those uh, vacancies are uh, listed uh, uh, A through E in your item before you under option one. I tell you what, I know Commissioner Dozier said she was looking to move on from uh, continuum care, and I appreciate your service there. Why don't we do this? Uh, why don't we take up the boards that we absolutely know? Um, I'll ask this. Are all the members of the CRTPA willing to stay on that board? Yes. Yes. So, so can I have a motion to accept that? Motion to accept that. Motion's been made in the second. All in favor can indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries out objection. Move Jimbo serves on everything else. <laughs> Commissioner. <laughs> Commissioner. <laughs> All opposed, aye. <right. laughs> Commissioner Lowe's, how do you feel about the EDA? Uh, the EFA? EFA, yes, sir. I'd be proud to continue. Move it. Second. Excuse me, I didn't know. All those in favor of the motion on the came by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries out objection. Commissioner Proctor. Commissioner Proctor, how do you feel about uh, JJC? I'd like to. Um, uh, nominate uh, Commissioner uh, Jackson to serve uh, this important role. And it's consistent, um, I think, uh, with uh, you know what? a lot That's of great issues juvenile. I'll second that. I'll second that. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Jackson, do you accept that nomination? I do. Good, good, good. All right, so motion's on the floor. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, the second to the Educational Facilities Authority. Yes. We missed that for the record. Who seconded that motion? Oh, no. Okay. Commissioner Daly, thank you. Forgive me, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. I'm sorry, Ms. Voss. Yes. Um, so I have a motion on the floor for Commissioner, I'm sorry, for Vice Chair Jackson to chair the, uh, or to be the appointment to the JJC board from our, com from our commission. Uh, that, that motion was made by Commissioner Proctor, and I believe it was seconded by myself as the chair. And I will actually ask you, Commissioner Proctor, to add uh, myself as the Workforce Development uh, Consortium member from 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 our board um so i like to say yeah so moved. thank you uh so on both of those appointments all those in favor indicate by saying aye any opposed motion carries the objection anything else oh continue okay that's right um may i mr chair please um you all have heard me mention Continua Care for a while now. I've, um, it was just created, I think, about three and a half years ago, so I've served for three and a half years. Um, the changes that have been made on that board, it's a bi-monthly meeting, um, are substantial. And they've got a lot more support and are working with a lot of agencies throughout the community um, on homelessness and throughout the region. Just wanted to clarify, Mr. County Administrator, the change um, in the Charter for Continuum of Care also allowed a staff member to be al an alternate board member. So um, I, I would hope someone would be interested in serving on this board, but um, I wasn't sure I mean, that that person will be designated by the County Administrator. Is that correct? Based on the change in the charter, you, you would be designated in a staff counterpart. That's correct. Is that right? Okay. That's correct. Commissioner Thank Dozier, you. I think you should recommend Commissioner Lowe's for that. You, uh, I would love to recommend Commissioner Dozier. Right. Thank you and, for stepping up. And on point, let me just point out that you guys carried my water for at least the last two years, so I am more than happy to step <laughs> in and then start to offload some. So right. I <laughs> don't. <laughs> Well, while, while we're, we're at it, CRT Commissioner DeLoge, you know, I mean, how, you, you, how do you feel about Deloge. the CRA? Uh, it's a little hot topic. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. Yeah, stop it. All right. Um, okay, so motion on the floor for the continuum of care uh, made by Commissioner Dozier, seconded by Commissioner Daly, uh, was for Commissioner DeLoge to be the board appointment. Any objection to that? Seeing no objection, we'll show that as accepted. Ms. Voss, do we have any more business? We do not, Mr. Chairman. We just have uh, one uh, speaker card under uh, Citizens to be Heard. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, yes. before we move further on, 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 on appointment, yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to just uh, appoint uh, Ms. Um, Catherine Jones uh, as our resident um, um, <laughs> uh, Chef Girl ID uh, dessert, <laughs> dessert <laughs> specialist. <laughs> Specialists, and uh, we, I mean, I don't know if you got a chance to wipe your spoon off a little bit, but um, this is just phenomenal talent. 
And I just think that she, we need to find a t title to designate her as our uh, um, chef in residence or something. Well, not not to not to cause any controversy, but um, there was a baking contest a while back, and I like to for a recall because she was in that thing and didn't win. So <laughs> it ain't legit. Trust that it's not legit. That's fake news. Outcome. Yes, sir. No, no, Kathy. Thank you so much for all the baking that you did for us today. I'm sure everybody up here as well as staff appreciates uh, what you did, and you know me particularly, of course. I appreciate it as your uh, your partner in crime, uh, Mr. Administrator Speaker. Yes, uh, Kathy McGee. Kathy, name and address for the record, please, ma'am. Hi, my name is Kathy McGee. My address is 253 Lorraine Court. And I am here representing Big Ben Crime Stoppers along with my partner, Mr. Don Head. I am honored to be here as a representative of Big Ben Crime Stoppers at the request of Commissioner Proctor. Thank you. Crime Stoppers is a nonprofit organization and a primary source dedicated to obtaining confidential information on wanted persons, crimes, and the <coughs> apprehension of criminals through anonymous tips. In turn, the program provides a cash reward if the anonymous tip leads to an arrest of a suspected criminal. At present, the crime issues in our community warrant that we have an all-hands-on-deck approach and should not be seen as an issue limited to the city of Tallahassee the issue exists throughout Leon County. I stand before you today to ask for an immediate call to action in support of the report crime initiative with the request of proposed funding in the amount of $50,000, which would match the city commission commitment to funding this initiative. Crime Stoppers works and has been proven to be a very effective tool in solving crimes in our community as law enforcement can attest. There are three vital components to this organization that all go hand in hand. The media and public awareness is most essential to getting the message out, but in turn is the most expensive. Crime Stoppers wants to be able to create new avenues to publicize our targeted message and visibility. Law enforcement is also vital and necessary in apprehending the criminal. The community involvement is imperative in reporting of the information. Crime Stoppers wants to be able to increase rewards and also expand reward criteria to include rewards for tips which prevent the occurrence of a crime. With this immediate funding, we would like to be able to ensure the success of this initiative. Thank you for considering this request. Thank you, Madam Commissioner Proctor. Uh, Chairman, I, uh, I, I, I suspect that you all have met with uh, Ms. Sharon Alfani uh, related to uh, Crime Stoppers. I had a letter that I was wanted to submit, can't find it, uh, asking that if we could agenda their, um, their request and if we could place it on agenda, uh, the city has supported it. As you know, uh, this is an issue which uh, has gripped our community for uh, a few months now. And everything that we can do to um, um, close the gap of crime, its reporting, uh, the prosecution of it, uh, I think that we should do all that we can to support uh, this outstanding group. Uh, I would like to make a motion that we agenda their, their request. Yeah. Motion to agenda has been made by Commissioner Proctor. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that as chair. Um, all those in favor of the motion on the floor indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries without objection. Thank you, ma'am. We'll move. Uh, any more speakers, Mr. Administrator? No, well, we do not have any more. Okay. Thank you. Um, any more business, Mr. Administrator? No, there are no uh, further items on the agenda. Thank you, sir. Mr. Turney? Mr. Chairman, um, at the request of the commission, as led by Commissioner Deloge yesterday, he would like a little ethics update when I get the floor every meeting. So here's one. Another honest services victim uh, took a fall on Friday, former state legislator uh, out of Daytona, whose name is Dwayne Taylor. Um, uh, was caught in the honest services wire fraud 
convicted of nine counts on um, uh, and Friday was sentenced by the U.S. District Judge of the Middle District to 13 months in prison, a $69,000 reimbursement fine, and followed by 18 months of supervised release. How did he commit the wire fraud? He used an ATM card to pull money from his uh, candidacy accounts, take the cash, and put the cash in his regular bank accounts. Um, and so that the wire fraud is that it crossed, the, the servers are across state lines. And so that triggered the mechanism, and uh, yeah, that's how it happened. So on a happier note, a very happy holiday to all of your, you and your families that are currently not in federal prison. And uh, from, from my family to yours, have, have a wonderful holiday. Thank you. Thanks, Her. Uh, I didn't say they weren't going to be downers from time <laughs> yes, to time. Uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Minister. Quickly, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, just uh, as you saw scrolling through the images tonight, just a big kudos to our tourism division for uh, in parks and recreation. I can never forget the work that they do in, in helping us pull off uh, these major championships. And then we hosted another one in the USA Track and Field Cross Country Championship just recently. It was wildly successful. Uh, and in that same vein, and Commissioner Dozier may mention something about this, and I want to steal the thunder, but a big kudos to uh, OEV uh, in hosting of the ACE 8 uh, tour, which gave us truly international exposure to our community and our economic development efforts. And a big thanks to the board and Commissioner Dozier for your leadership on that as well. Uh, finally, commissioners, thanks again for another highly productive retreat, and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, that was, you know how it goes. Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Commissioner Dozier. I'm sorry. No, we don't start with you. That's why I'm looking at you. Uh, Commissioner Lilly. <laughs> You're going to try to tell us all. Uh, I just wanted to really appreciate yesterday's retreat also and the, uh, the simplification of our ethics uh, code. I thought it was great. You know, I did take time to read that this morning, underlining, and I like the Q&A and all of the very good information to keep top of mind. So can't be too important. And I hope uh, that our county attorney doesn't come up with such extreme uh, examples of misbehavior in the future, but it's sobering. Happy holidays to everybody, all you out here in the community and all the staff who's so great all week. All year, and I hope you have a really good time for the next few weeks. Not working quite so hard. Thank you, Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're keeping us on our toes now. We don't know where you're going to go. Um, I'm with Commissioner Lindley. I'm all for the anecdotes, and goodness knows we can laugh at some dumb criminals, right? But uh, let's mix it up with some good things and remind everybody that we're just keeping ethics on the forefront. This is not because we're worried about anyone in our own house, right? Mm -hmm. um, but keeping it fresh in mind. So thank you for that. And I um, did appreciate the book as well and the retreat. So picking up on the county administrator's um, comments, I do want to let you all know, because you probably won't get a formal update from, I see Ben Pingree and Dale Jones is in the audience, I'm not sure who else is, is this Christina? Christina Price is here, okay. So uh, I see our arm coming out. You all need to know, or I would like to share with you, really, um, but I think we all need to know that at the end of this trip, we were told that the California delegate who was shadowing this trip to plan um, next fall in you know, high tech, you know, in an area that really does, we would say does a lot of these types of research and exchange and other things like that. They were told to talk to Christina and Lindsay and OEV as the, you know, the model of how to plan an America's competitiveness exchange. So just our staff hit this one out of the park. For me, and you're about to start getting into some of the pictures, when I went on this tour in 2015, and from Argonne National Lab to high-tech research facilities that we are pining for and incubators. I am so phenomenally proud of our community. From the panel, uh, the panel discussions were amazing, risk management, other things, but we got to see the fastest climbing robot by weight, the largest wind tunnel in the entire world. Um, there were some major announcements made in, during this trip. 
And it it proved what what we all know and what I thought a few years ago that we were ready to showcase this. We also brought something to the table though that other communities did not, and that was a focus on K-12 with Psy Girls and a phenomenal panel at FAMU. Um, President Robinson came in and others talking about getting minorities into um, entrepreneurial programs and other things. It was amazing. So the, the participants said this was the best day on the North Central Florida trip. So forgive me for taking a minute there, but this, the staff deserves a phenomenal uh, kudos, congrats for this, many thank you. And I think the most important part is that we've all heard from people who made direct contacts that will bear partnerships and business contacts in the future, and that's what this was about. So thank you. It was an exciting day. Um, and I'm really proud of our community right now and everything we've done. With that, I have one little minor uh, proclamation to request, but it ties in right with three of our items tonight. So I'd like to request a proclamation for Solar United Neighborhoods of Florida. Um, this is to support the concept of solar purchasing co-op in our area. There's going to be an event on January 10th. I'd like to thank the libraries for working with them on three public meetings they'll hold, hold around that time. And this will be presented at an outside event. So I think the solar co-op is exciting given what we just talked about tonight. That would be my motion. So motion. second to the motion. I'll yeah. second it. Any objection? Motion carries the objection. Thank you. And uh, finally, it's Hanukkah this week. Happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas. And I will see you all in the new year. Thank you. Ms. Vice Chair. Uh, you mixed it up. Um, yeah, uh, same thing. Uh, happy holidays uh, to everyone. I do want to thank my um, friend, uh, Mr. Proctor, for the uh, education and philosophical um, um, uh, differences. But I do think it, it kind of points out the variety and the and the uh, the uh, folks that we have on the board. Um, I guess you would just say that uh, we all have different representations, but I think we we normally are searching for the right decisions for not only business and and homes, but um, all of our schools and our, our children. Uh, so thank you again. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Proctor. Chairman, commissioners, I'm very pleased to announce that Mr. Elmore Nickelberry will be our uh, Martin Luther King uh, speaker uh, on, on January 10th, Wednesday. Um, Mr. Nickelberry is the oldest uh, living uh, sanitation worker in Memphis, um, and, and next year marks the 50th year, which uh, assassination year of Dr. Martin Luther King in 1968 and this year the Martin Luther King Foundation uh, thought it not robbery to invite uh, Mr. Elmore Nickelberry uh, to come to be our speaker. Uh, Mr. Nickelberry um, whose son grew up wanted to be like his father, he wanted to be a, he wanted to be a garbage man and uh, very interesting story. Uh, there is a documentary called I Am a Man which uh, Mr. Nickelberry uh, is featured. Um, his son created a, uh, a uh, waste company that hires 560-some workers. So he grew up to be uh, like his father in the sanitation business. Um, temporarily, uh, we, we, we schedule what has always been downstairs uh, on the first floor, but Reverend McAllister, uh, Bethel AME Church has been kind uh, and has offered Bethel as a host site this year because of uh, the desire to recognize uh, our sanitation workers uh, and our public works workers this year, uh, which if, if those persons attended downstairs, we, we, we just couldn't hold them. So we're going to do this at Bethel AME Church merely because of the uh, delegations of uh, public works workers and garbage workers and those those uh, personnel who contribute to our community this year. So please, if you would mark your calendars uh, for the 10th of January. I see our first meeting next year is going to be on the 23rd, of, uh, so I wanted to say that now. Um, also, um, our charter amendment public hearing is scheduled for August 21st. And at some point, though I don't see it in our tentative regular meeting schedule, that this commission will get a chance to gnaw, gnaw on that bone and get some input.
but we do have a public uh, hearing, and I imagine this will be on the ballot in November. But I, I hope that we could make room and place somewhere that it just ain't going to a public hearing without coming uh, by us for uh, review. Uh, okay, it will. Okay, good, good. Don't back it down to the last minute. You know, we need a chance to get to it sooner or later. I asked the board for uh, uh, if our chairman might be permitted to send a letter of, of welcome to Coach Willie Taggart and to Coach Willie Simmons on behalf of uh, the Leon County Board of County Commissioners, and if we would allow him to represent us in sending a letter of welcome to our two coach coaches for university. Thank you, Commissioner Prime. Without objection. Thank you so much. And then finally, uh, staff, uh, it came up during the break that today's uh, today's work uh, was covered in 100. I'm sorry, 1,112 pages uh, worth of, uh, of trees uh, helped to make tonight's agenda. And this is one of those old school agenda events that uh, this is our book tonight. And I just wanted to say that when you start going over over 75 pages, you know, that's straining me. But uh, I tried to tiptoe to, to get through it. And uh, we thank you much. Uh, season's greetings to all. Uh, best wishes to you and your families. Uh, best wishes to the uh, Leon County community and the families who comprise uh, our very important and our illustrious community. Uh, we thank you very much. God's blessings. Mr. Administrator. Now, Commissioner Proctor, just a quick reminder that Alan just brought it to my attention that we've actually got a workshop scheduled for you for April for to receive the Charter Committee's recommendations. April. Okay, great. Commissioner Daly. One item, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask for a very special proclamation honoring the mixed doubles 40 and over nice. United States Tennis Association national champs here out of Tallahassee, Leon County, Florida. It is the first national championship that the mixed doubles 40 and over uh, 7.0 rank wow. has ever won in Tallahassee. It's the first tennis national championship that we have had coming out of Tallahassee. And oh snap, there was a daily on the team. My <laughs> sister-in-law played. They won nationals. I would love a proclamation to honor them at the next county commission meeting in January. Yes. <laughs> The whole daily family coming for that? Far and wide, let me tell you. Hey, I tell you what, I was about to say, John, I never would have guessed it, but. Hey, let me tell you, we now have a national championship in our family, too, Mr. Chairman. That's, uh, you know. <laughs> That's just one more thing we have in common, right? But I would like a uh, proclamation, please, at the January County Commission meeting honoring the, on a serious note, it is the first national championship that the mixed doubles 40 and over 7.0 has ever won in the first uh, championship in 20 years coming out of Tallahassee. You didn't hear, but Commissioner Lindley said she married in, so technically she's not your <laughs> Oh, no, she's daily. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, no, without objection, it's all yours. Thank you. That's all I have. Commissioner Loesch. Chair and Herb, thank you for humoring me. Maybe we can change it up and make it like stupid criminal tricks or something. And, and if you could do it in the form of a limerick, that'd be kind of cool. Too, <laughs> <if you don't laughs> <mind>. <laughs> um, Commissioner Dozier pointed out what a great job you guys did with the uh, group that came here, the ACE group that was here last week. And I was in Texas last weekend for the NACO fourth quarter board meeting. They are still talking about last year's board meeting when they came. In fact, we compared to Fort Worth, we knocked them dead. Everybody goes, man, the, the, the tours last year were better. The content was better. I heard that repeatedly from board members and staff. So anyway, we, we do a great job. I'm proud to be part of the team. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, and all that other stuff. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I just, I just have one complaint. Um, as I remember last year, I don't think you had near as many tough issues on your first agenda there, Commissioner Daly. Um, What's up with the working through dinners? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think 1,112 pages, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to pull the Commissioner Pryor and say it's because I'm black. Mr. Chairman, um, it, was, it was your birthday present. <laughs> sure. oh, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, and look, Merry Christmas. Mr. We'll see Chair, you it was for your birthday. 
Yeah, that's oh, my birthday. It's a present for your look, birthday. Look, you can call it whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call something else. Anyway, um, everybody have a Merry Christmas. I look forward to seeing everybody in January. We're adjourned.